I'm John Kovac. I'm a newspaper editor. I'm a radio announcer. I'm a high school football coach. And since I was old enough to stand on the side of a stream next to my dad, I've been an angler. I've fished with bait, lures, and flies. I've fished with spinning gear, fly rods, jigging poles, and tip-ups. I've stood on ice, waded rapids, and been tossed about the deck of a boat. And I want you to love fishing, be it freshwater or salt, heavy flows, high seas, or cutting through a foot of ice, as much as I do, no matter what the quarry, no matter the tactics, no matter the chosen tackle. Welcome to Yankee Fisherman. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Yankee Fisherman, presented by the Dock Shop here on the HAN Network. John Kovach with you. November 10th already. We're a day from Veterans Day. We're two weeks from Thanksgiving. That means we're a month from Christmas. I'm having trouble coping with that. But there's still a lot of time to fish, and we're going to be talking a lot about things you might want for Christmas in the near future, too. But we had a great weekend, got to spend Sunday up at the Catskill Fly Fishing Center and Museum's Arts of the Angler event that was up at the Ethan Allen Inn. Would like to have seen some more people there, but good event. Caught up with a lot of people, got a lot of ideas, and a lot of things are going to happen out of that show. Among the people that we saw again, renewed contact with, Jay Fishy Fulham, author, artist, fly tire, He's known for his creative ties, his flies that are made with uh, unusual materials. He was showing me one he was working on with the label off a wine bottle, a metallic uh, wrap on a wine bottle that he was using that looked really good. He has a new seminar, and he's going to be rolling that out on the 19th and 20th down in Somerset at the International Fly Tying Symposium. We got a few minutes to sit down with Fishy and catch up. Here he is. Yankee Fisherman at Art of the Angler in Danbury, Connecticut, Ethan Allen in. Catching up with Jay Fishy Fulham yet again. Having a fun day, those of us who are here up at the Ethan Allen in. Fishy, you've got a new presentation you're going to be unveiling on your fly tying and some of the things that you do with, with some of your unique materials. Yeah, exactly, John. I, I, I needed some new material, so I've, I've really gone up and did a, I did a new presentation on warm water, cold water, and of course for the international, it's fly tying. And I normally I do four, five, six flies and try to throw in some tips and tricks, uh, with, and I've done that for several years now at the international. But basically what I did this year is I went almost entirely on tips and tricks. Things that, little things that help you in your time, little things you can do that are, uh, they're not very significant unless you put a bunch of them together and then it'll make you a little better tire. And it's uh, it's a different thing. The unfortunate thing about John is is I've used up all my tips and tricks. <laughs> you know, on, on this one, I, uh, when I wrote a newspaper article, you didn't tell everything you knew about trout fishing in your first article. You had to, because you had a deadline next week or the week after. But uh, I really think that this is going to be a big help for the for the tires because even if they know them, it'll reinforce it. Uh, if it's a trick that they don't know, maybe they can try it and see if it's worthwhile. I think we have some fun with it. Are you using the fun materials that you're known for doing? Oh yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm actually using some some dry fly hackle and a few of the things that, that are re I, I use as much as I do the synthetics. But I, I like. I like using the other the materials. There's, as an example, using the seatbelt pieces and cut them for the fibers for uh, wing material. Uh, for smaller flies, that material is better than anything else I've ever found. It's not a substitute, it's better. So sometimes I f find something that's a peculiar item that not only replaces a, a regular uh, fiber or regular uh, material used in tying, it actually is an improvement, a better, better material for little or nothing. Oh, look, I know I'm one of those people who doesn't want to throw anything away, and I find things, you and I had a discussion, little foil wrappers, like material like that, always looking for some way to incorporate that into a fly pattern. That's something you're going to learn in this uh, Yes, exactly. 
Yeah, I ruined some of my some of my tying buddies because they used to be strictly Casco tires with dry flies, and now I've got them tying with glue and goo, as they put it. Uh, Davy Brandt's always busting me about tying glue and goo, but once in a while we sit down and tie some real classic, you know, Casco dries. And we, you know, that's something you really you need to know the, the skills to be able to. Yeah, well, you made a comment to me earlier yesterday that, that I'm not trying to pat myself on the back the second time, but you said something about you, know, you, you really have to have the background in tying in general in order to branch out from that and do some of the crazy stuff that I do. You still need the tying background. Well, the symposium that's coming up at the International Fly Tying Symposium in Somerset, will that be something that a beginner tire could get something out of? Well, what I tell a lot of people at the, at the symposium is, is you get somebody that's gotten the idea that they want to get into tying or, or they've been into tying a while, you know, get your money's worth. You paid the, you paid a buck at the door to get in, you know, ask questions. Because the people at the internet, the fly fishing, fly tying community in general, are very open to helping people. And basically, if you've got a problem or a question, ask them. You're in a, in a room that there isn't literally anything in fly tying that you can't find somebody in there that really it's their niche and they really know it and they're more than happy to give you a, a quick private class for a few minutes and help you. And that's one of the beauties of this event is that you can go around, sit down with some of these tires, talk to them and just see what they're doing. And to a person, everybody I visited with up here was doing something new that they didn't do last year. One of the interesting things is when the international started, one of the one of the things that was a real problem amongst the American tires, U.S. tires, and the foreign tires is the foreign element were very secretive. They don't help each other. And the thing is, if, if one of us would get a, a new material and thought it was worthwhile, we'd package it and give everybody give everybody a sample. And it took them a while to get used to the fact that we were very open and helped each other. And now, now of course, they've come around and they're just fine too. But but they aren't that way normally. They they, they kind of learn from us that you know it's just not a bad thing to help a guy tie a fly, not keep it a secret. You know. Well, the, what other new things are going on with you? Oh, I, I, I've got uh, some seminars in some places I've never been before. I'm looking forward to that because it, basically it's new friends, new you know, new people, new new experience. So I, I'm really happy with that. I've got a book finished, and now I've got to figure out where I'm going to go to get, which direction I'm going to go to get it printed because everybody's hollering. Do you have another book? Do you have another book? You know, but uh, this one of course is more tips and tricks and tying. Can never get enough of them. No, and I and I enjoy doing them, and the fact that I can illustrate them helps. You know, I don't. I, I can. I sometimes an illustration is a better way of getting a point across than more text. Yeah. And you certainly have the skill set to do that. We've seen that. Fishy, let us know when the book's coming out. We'll have you back on. Here, thank you. I appreciate it. Fishy Fulham on Yankee Fisherman, presented by the Dock Shop. We'll be back with more after this. Leaves are changing, water temps dropping, and the sun is setting a little earlier each day. But there's still a lot of great boating, fishing, and coast time left before we see the first snow. And above all, remember, it's always summer at the Dock Shop. With loads of new fishing tackle and accessories, clothing, jewelry, and home decor, the Dock Shop is just what you need when you start to feel that New England autumn chill. Boater, beach bum, fishermen, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, DockShop.com. As you're getting back to your regular schedules, we're excited to get back to doing what we do best, offering you the freshest seasonal fare and all the ingredients for a healthy start to school. So shop Walter Stewart's for everything fresh, from A, apples to Z, zucchini, and from cotton candy grapes to back to nature, all natural snack bags. We save you time by stocking all of your favorite back to school essentials under one roof. Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. Handymancd.com Let our satisfied customers tell it. I have called Mr. Handyman for every reason, every occasion, every broken item, every leak. They have bailed me out on many occasions and I would recommend them to anyone. For any project, large or small. Mr. Handymancd.com
Are you ready for winter? Ski and Sport has everything you need to be fully outfitted for the season. A family-owned and operated business with over 40 years of experience, Ski and Sport's three convenient locations in Fairfield County offer top quality, high fashion ski and winter wear. In addition to clothing for men, women, and children, we also offer seasonal rentals for the entire family. Stop by our stores on 1 Ethan Allen Highway in Richfield, 877 Post Road East in Westport, and at 110 Main Street in New Canaan. Or visit us at skiandsport.net. If you're watching this broadcast, you're not alone. The HAN Network is available for 200,000 Connecticut cable customers on the Frontier Network. And we've also reached 1.7 million viewers on our free live streaming sports, news, and entertainment broadcasts. To reach our rapidly growing audience, contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Welcome back to Yankee Fisherman, presented by the Dock Shop this Thursday, November 10th. Thanks again to Fishy Fulham. Great time with him. Took my father up to Arts of the Angler, his first visit there. He got to meet some of the guys, hang out a little bit, got to get him tie in a little bit, but was a lot of fun to catch up with Fishy, for some of the other people. We've got some other segments that we tape there coming up in future shows, and one's coming up right now. Veterans Day is tomorrow. Thank a veteran. This is their day. It's the day for all of them. Say thanks to them. And there are organizations, so many, that use fishing as a way of reaching veterans. You have Healing Waters. You have Back in the Mainstream. And we just caught up with them after meeting them last year, Arts of the Angler. They're doing a lot to help guys who come back use fishing and their related hobbies to feel better and, and feel whole again. We were lucky enough to sit down with them for a little bit Sunday. Yankee Fishermen, we are at the Catskill Fly Fishing Center and Museum's Art of the Angler Show in Danbury. We are catching up with the guys from back in the mainstream. They're down again. This year meeting with William Clooney and Steve Rother. Guys, tell us about back in the mainstream. What we do know is that you help disabled veterans by taking them fishing. That's correct. Uh, we're disabled veterans and we're reaching out to the uh, disabled veterans in the main, uh, central main area. And uh, we find them, pull them out of their isolation and teach them how to fish along with us, right? We do. And uh, it's healing through fishing. What we do is we get people fishing and, and they forget about all their problems. And it works really good. It's a good therapy. And some people call it physical therapy. I like to call it physical therapy. It's a healing process. Uh, and they just kind of let their problems melt away. And it works really good. And uh, as a nonprofit, we. Uh, we rely on donations and uh, uh, the generous uh, donations that we get from different lodges and guides and uh, donors for different programs that we have, different events. And this is one of the, the fundraisers that we do. Um, and we collect, uh, and we've got a raffle going right now for this fly rod, the baby fly rod, in a case that one of our veterans makes, uh, these wooden products over here. And these wood products, incredibly handsome. That has to help too in terms of both uh, physical and occupational therapy as well as psychologically? Exactly. That's like the, the time that flies also, the same thing. Um, it, it gives a fo another focus, another form of a focus where you can forget about your troubles and you are focused on a certain project or whatever. Because we have a commonality, um, we don't have to discuss all of our disabilities, but we uh, we have uh, accommodations and we match the uh, 
a, a guide with uh, with a particular fishing trip, and uh, uh, we are able then through our donations to to meet all the needs and supply them with uh, food and lodging and make it a really all around good time for our veterans. Were you guys anglers before your service? I was, yes. yes. What did you uh, fish for, William? Uh, started off as a kid just for panfish and uh, and then moved into the big game fish, uh, smallmouth bass and largemouth bass and trout and salmon. And when I, I'm from Michigan, so when I moved to Maine, um, the focus was more uh, trout and salmon. And then come to find out there's a number of smallmouth bass rivers there also that it, that type of fishing also is included in what I like now. I grew up with uh, trout in, uh, in Pennsylvania, northern Pennsylvania, but uh, through my service in the uh, Navy, I've had the privilege of fishing for a lot of things all over the world, so uh, it's, fishing is a way of life. <laughs> Has working with back in the mainstream been therapeutic for you guys too? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's another component is, is you start off thinking, well, I'm a veteran and I can get into this program and I can go on these nice fishing trips. But like for myself, I, I was a guide for a number of years, a fishing guide, and so I offered my guiding services to the program. And um, the president at that time said, well, you're also a disabled veteran, so you can fish with us too. You don't have to just guide. But but it's when you're serving. I guess I guess veterans are ser have a serving type of an attitude. Um, you're you don't want to stop serving. You want to continue to serve. So you serve by helping other veterans um, learn how to fish and improve their fishing or whatever. And it, that is therapeutic when you're when you're helping somebody. Your focus is off from you and your problems, and, and your focus is on helping this other person. So that's another form of therapy right there. And a lot of our veterans, uh, they'll come in and fish with us for a while, and after a little while, they're looking to um, also serve, and they're looking for ways to help their fellow veterans. So we're self-perpetuating, and um, and we actually grow that way. They bring in our, our veteran brothers and sisters. And what it does, you you know, you're you you have your disability and you're overcoming that and then at the same time though you can always look to another veteran and see that they've got something worse than you do and the, and, and so the, oh, they need a help with doing this and you you kind of forget about your problems and you are helping other people it seems to really be therapeutic have you seen veterans who were not anglers get into fishing through the program no I don't I don't know it of any of the guys that, um, you know, a lot of them are, are bait fishers or spin fishers, right. and then, then we get them into fly fishing, you know, but I don't actually know of any, I'm sure there are, but I'm not aware of any of them that are, were never anglers before. But we've, uh, we've opened some new facets in fly fishing. Um, to some, they've never, uh, they've never tied flies before, so we have some uh, experts come in, demonstrate, and, uh, and get them tying some flies. Or and making uh, rods. even making some rods. Yeah, or reels. There's oh, a class in, in making yeah. reels. Really? Yeah. So the really resources are great. I mean, what you're doing in terms of <clears throat> making things and, and helping people learn new skills and, and improve their dexterity, really, with a lot of these tasks that need to be done to tie flies, to make rods, to make reels. It has to be a feeling of achievement at the end of a project. Yeah, it really is. And that's what keeps us keeps us motivated and, and uh, that's why we like to do these, uh, have these opportunities to get out and, and, and not only uh, have other people share in, in um, providing these, but also let other people, uh, you know, a lot of veterans know that we're there and we're there for them. Now you're for Maine residing disabled veterans? Yeah. yeah. But you've done outings throughout the Northeast, throughout Maine. I know you've been down in Connecticut at least yeah. once or twice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and anybody really anywhere can help you guys reach out to disabled veterans through fishing. How can we do that? Uh, just spreading the word, uh, letting them know. Uh, our biggest need really is our biggest need is is veterans, uh, disabled veterans, to join the program. 
and that's really easy uh, just by coming to the meetings and, and uh, signing up for different events. But the um, uh, different guides or lodges or uh, different organizations, uh, Trout Unlimited, different chapters, they've all um, sponsored our fishing trips. And uh, it's an amazing thing to see how many generous people there are uh, really that are willing to help out their veterans. I think they understand the truth uh, cost of freedom. I think that's what they are getting at when they're when they're donating their time and their resources to our, our group. Yeah. You can get information at backinthemainstream.org and that's Maine with an E like the state. Yes. William Clooney, Steve Rother, thank you for your service and thank you for continuing to help veterans. Thank you. We'll be back with more Yankee Fishermen presented by the Dock Shop right after this. Changing water temps dropping and the sun is setting a little earlier each day. But there's still a lot of great boating, fishing, and coast time left before we see the first snow. And above all, remember, it's always summer at the Dock Shop. With loads of new fishing tackle and accessories, clothing, jewelry, and home decor, the Dock Shop is just what you need when you start to feel that New England autumn chill. Boater, beach bum, fishermen, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Dairy End, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, DockShop.com. Washington Pride, now open on Main Street in Georgetown. Come enjoy our relaxed setting, excellent service, award-winning nightly happy hours, and feast on our creative new American cuisine. Connecticut Magazine's winner for best steak, Washington Prime of Georgetown. Have a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast, without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care, open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook. At InSports Trumbull, the game is always on inside. Recently renovated and home to one of Connecticut's largest indoor turf fields, InSports is a multi-sport recreation center providing state-of-the-art facilities for league play, camps, and youth programs. Sign up now for InSports passing and receiving positional November soccer clinic, scheduled for November 19th. Sessions are available for U13 to U14, U15 to U16, and U17 to U19. Featuring college coaches from around the region, this is your official home of Connecticut's Olympic Development Soccer Program. For more information, visit InSportsCenters.com. Give your day a jump start with the latest news, sports, weather, and more on Coffee Break, live on the HAN Network, weekdays at 11 a.m. Connecticut news doesn't get any more local than on Coffee Break. I'm Frank Granito. And I'm Donald Ng for the HAN Network. Tune in to Nutmeg Sports Monday through Thursday, where we bring you all the top stories from Connecticut sports. From highlights to player interviews and expert analysis, no one gets you closer to Connecticut's games than Nutmeg Sports. Nutmeg Sports, now Monday through Thursday at 2 p.m. on the HAN Network. Welcome back to Yankee Fisherman, presented by the Dock Shop this Thursday, November 10th. Great job by William Clooney and Steve Rothert there representing back in the mainstream, and that's Maine with an E. Thank you guys for all you do and for your service to this country. The same goes to the folks with Project Healing Waters, Rivers of Recovery, all of you who served, and all of you who are trying to use angling as a way to reach out to these veterans we need to do that every day. We need to think about it every day, not just once a year. But tomorrow especially, thank a vet. A little bit of news in the fishing area. The uh, members of Nutmeg Trout Unlimited, along with volunteers from the Boy Scouts, etc., they were back on the Mill River along Congress Street in uh, Fairfield. That's right by the 
service area on the Merritt Parkway southbound. They were doing some planting last weekend. This is the most recent work being done there. That's where not weed has been removed. I've been part of this project. Uh, invasive plants, including the knotweed that I already mentioned, removed. This was additional planting following up on some that were already done. And then there's more planting to go. This project along the Mill River is uh, due in a large part to the generous support of donations from Orvis and Darien, Patagonia, Newman's Own, Oliver's Nursery of Fairfield. Phil Jacques of Nutmeg is chairing it, and uh, he thanked Oliver's Nursery for their assistance in selecting the plants and then placing them to make best use of them to protect the Mill River, which is a very important trout stream here in Connecticut. If you want to learn more about Nutmeg TU, Regular monthly meeting is coming up on Tuesday the 15th. That's at 7 o'clock at Port 5 Naval Veterans, 69 Brewster Street in Bridgeport. You go to the end of Ellsworth Street if you're familiar with Black Rock and turn left. Jerry Goldstein's got kind of a double header of presentations here. He's going to talk about underwater photography and how you can do it without spending a ton of money, how cameras can be outfitted outfitted for about $150 to take uh, great outdoor photos. I've really fallen in love with doing that and want to hear what Jerry has to say. Uh, Jerry's only been fishing for a few years, but he's really taken to it. Very enthusiastic about Trout Unlimited. Uh, he spin fishes for bass. He does saltwater fishing. There he is on the sound there. Also some kayaking. And he's going to give a second part of the presentation, which is about how you can outfit yourself to fly fish and to fish from a kayak without going broke. I mean, these costs can add up. He's going to talk about how you can do it without spending a mint and then some interesting stuff. If you want to get into fishing, this is a great presentation to come to. And any of these fishing clubs are real resources if you're trying to start out in angling, which can seem daunting don't let it. There are a lot of us here to help you get started, and Jerry's going to help you get started and keep some money in your pocket for other things. If you're watching the live show, the monthly meeting of the Housatonic Fly Fishermen's Association, that is tonight, Thursday the 10th at 7 at St. Paul's Episcopal, Episcopal excuse me, Church. That's at 65 North Main Street in Wallingford. Paul Denise, who was just a speaker for Nutmeg TU and was in our uh, saltwater segment, recently. He is going to talk about the six stages of fly fishing, a life's experience. We're going to talk more to Paul about that new presentation by him in the coming weeks. Another person we will be talking to in the coming weeks, as he just was introduced the other day, is Robert Rooley, and he is the new executive director of the American Museum of Fly Fishing in Manchester, Vermont. He is an avid fly fisher, he has experience in financial management, uh, fundraising and community building talents, according to American Museum of Fly Fishing Board President Karen Kaplan. Uh, he has worked for organizations on Nantucket, most recently the Nantucket Conservation Foundation, where he did development there for 10 years. He's organized community events, some that have drawn thousands of people, like the Cranberry Festival, and uh, that's something he hopes to do at the American Museum in Manchester, and we hope to help him do that, and we're going to have him on a future show to talk about that. I'm fishing this weekend. Hopefully you are. Hopefully we'll have some good stuff to show you next Thursday. Till then, tight lines.